This video is about the introductory concepts in statistics. By definition, statistics is a discipline concerned with the analysis of data and decision-making based upon data, where it involves collecting, organizing, summarizing, interpreting, and presenting data. On why do we have to learn statistics, it is because it is used in many areas of sciences. In medicine, statistics is used to determine the efficacy of a drug. As Professor Martin Bland said, medical students may not like statistics, but as doctors, they will. In business and economics, statistics is used in forecasting. And even in our daily lives, statistics is used to forecast weather conditions. In marketing, statistics is also used in studying consumer behavior. And similarly, in psychology, statistics is used in human behavior. In sports, statistics is also used to summarize the performance of the athletes. Commonly, in studying statistics, you will encounter two categories which are the descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Wherein descriptive statistics is the one that involves the method of organizing, summarizing, and presenting data. So when you simply compute for the average or present data through graphs, that is descriptive statistics. In short, descriptive statistics are limited to your data set. On the other hand, inferential statistics is the one that involves the methods of using the information from the sample to draw conclusions about the population. In which when we speak of the population, these are all the members of the subject of interest while the samples are the selected members of the subject of interest. And we call the result when data are from population as parameter, and we call the result when the data are from samples as statistics. Remember that we get samples to get statistics, which serves as an estimate of the parameter. And in studying statistics, we will encounter variables which are the ones that we measure and constants which are held fixed. Now, in the following scenarios, you will be asked to identify the following, population and samples, parameter and statistics, and variables and constants. For scenario number one, suppose that when all University of Sleep freshmen students were asked, it was found that on the average, they spend 3.7 hours of sleep per day during exam week. But from a 30 randomly selected University of Sleep freshmen students, it was found to be 3.6 hours per day. Can you identify which one is the population, samples, parameter, statistics, variable, and constant? It is clear that all the University of Sleep freshman students is the population. And the 30 randomly selected University of Sleep freshman students are the samples. And since the population is all the University of Sleep freshman students, then the parameter is 3.7 hours. While the statistics is the 3.6 hours. Which is basically the variable which is the number of hours of sleep. So you may consider that the number of sleep, for example, have the responses 5.1, 6.2, 3.1, 2.2, 3.2, 3 and so on in which the average of this, if these are from the population, is 3.7. And suppose that if these are from samples, the average is 3.6 hours. And we may consider the year level of the University of Sleep students, which is freshmen, or first year level, as the constant. Let us proceed with scenario number 2. From 100 randomly selected residents of Northern Alcovia, it was found that 13% of them had dengue fever in 2019. But according to the Institute of Health Epidemiology Center, 11.9% of all the residents of Northern Alcovia had dengue fever in 2019. Can you identify which is the population, samples, parameters, statistics, variable, and constant? It is clear that the population are all the residents of Northern Alcovia, while the sample are the 100 randomly selected residents of the Northern Alcovia. And since the population is all the residents of Northern Alcovia with incidence rate of dengue having 11.9%, then the parameter is 11.9%. And since the samples are the 100 randomly selected residents with incidence rate of dengue of 13%, then the statistics is 13%. In which this results is taken from responses, let's say the first resident had dengue, 
the second resident had dengue, the third resident had no dengue, the fourth resident had dengue, the fifth resident had no dengue, the sixth resident had no dengue, and so on. And considering the positive cases here, the incidence rate turned out to be 11.9%. And 13% if coming from the samples. Now, these responses are the responses in the variable which is the occurrence of dengue fever. So, the occurrence of dengue fever here have possible responses like had dengue, had no dengue, had dengue, had dengue, had no dengue in 2019 and so on. So these are the ones that we measured. That's why that is the variable in which the results are either 11.9% or 13%. And further, we may consider the disease which is dengue as the constant and the year which is 2019 as also a constant. Now, let's proceed to scenario number 3 wherein we can see here an Ishihara test which measures whether a person is colorblind or not. If you can see a number here which is the number 2, then you are not colorblind. But if you cannot see the number 2, then most probably you are a red, green, color blind. Oh my god! Holy sh! Wow! This is my new favorite flower. Now suppose that 5% of Asian men suffer from red-green color blindness. From 250 randomly selected men in Southeast Asia, it was found that 3% suffer from this type of color blindness. Can you identify the population, samples, parameters, statistics, variable, and constant? The population here are the Asian men, while the samples are the 250 randomly selected men in the Southeast Asia. It follows that the parameter is 5% and the statistics is 3%. And similarly, the variable here is the occurrence of the color blindness, in which each Asian man was measured whether he is color blind or not. And we may consider the type of color blindness since this is just about the red green color blindness as the constant and the race as well since this is are about the Asian men as a constant as well. So as we can see in the scenario 1, scenario 2 and scenario 3, all the values of the statistics are close to the value of the parameter. Since I have mentioned a while ago that statistics is an estimate of the parameter. Once the results of data are in, you may present it in either text in which results are in declarative form. This presentation is advised when you're trying to give an overview of a single group, like reporting their age, sex, and others. You may also present your results in tables which are composed of rows and columns. This method of presentation is advised when giving summary or repetition of categories, like comparing the average age of male and female, the number of smokers between male and female, the average monthly income of male and female. And of course, you may present your results in diagrams which are called graphs, in which bar graphs are used to compare average, counts, or percent of different groups. Line graphs which are used to observe trend. It may also be used to compare trend and observe gaps between groups across time. Note that line graphs are best used when the horizontal axis is an element of time, like data expressed in daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly time interval. Next, we have pie graphs which are used to express parts of a whole. But remember that there are sources which recommends a maximum of 5 to 7 sectors only. More than that, you may use others for categories with relatively low counts or percentages. And there are other graphs which we may consider. The scatter plot, which is used to describe the relationship of two quantitative variables. The statistical maps which present information with respect to geographical location. 
Pictograms, which are series of repeated resembling icons to visualize simple data. The population pyramid, also known as the age-gender pyramid, which shows the distribution of different age groups in a population according to gender. Box plots, which shows the five-number summary called as the quartiles in a given set of data. Violin plots, which is similar to the box plot with the addition of putting densities on each side. Just take extra precautions in creating graphs. I have posted below in the description box on how to spot misleading graphs. Now let's proceed to variables which are classified into two, the quantitative variables and the qualitative variables. Quantitative variables are those variables which are expressed in numerical form, while the qualitative variables, also known as the categorical variables, are those expressed in textual form. But further, we may classify qualitative variables into two levels, the nominal and the ordinal. The nominal levels are those categorical variables in which responses have no order. Or in other words, these are the variables in which the responses are all in the same level. Examples include race in which responses may not be ranked. Whether we are American, Hispanic, or Black, we are all on the same level. Color in which responses may not be ranked as well. Red, blue, green, yellow, and so on are all on the same level. Likewise, sex is nominal. It is because male or female are on the same level. This is occurrence whether a patient has a disease or not. Likewise, subscription, whether a customer is subscribed or not, are all nominal. Ordinal data, on the other hand, are qualitative variables in which responses have order. These are variables in which responses may be ranked or may be arranged ascendingly or descendingly. Like the position in an organization, president is the highest, followed by vice president, secretary, and so on. Likewise, BMI interpretation, like underweight, normal, overweight, and obese. Smoking frequency like heavy, moderate, light, or non-smoker. Likewise, the Likert scale which uses always, oftentimes, sometimes, rarely, and never is strictly ordinal. As for the quantitative variable, similarly, it may categorize into two levels, the interval and ratio. To differentiate these two, all you have to remember are two things. First is ratio have absolute zero while interval has relative zero. Absolute zero means that its zero response indicate nothingness or absence. Like number of books in which zero means there is no book. Amount of alcohol in which zero liters of alcohol means there is no alcohol. Height in which zero foot indicates that the object is absent or does not exist. On the other hand, in relative zero, zero response does not mean absence. Like for example, zero degrees Celsius does not imply absence of heat. Although keep in mind that zero degrees Kelvin in physics means absence of heat. Thus making temperatures expressed in degrees Kelvin are ratio while degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius are in interval. Aside from absolute zero and relative zero, ratio can be expressed as factor of one response of the other. Like for example, the amount of money is in ratio. It is because 100 pesos is 5 times the value of 20 pesos. And similarly, 20 pesos is 4 times the value of 5 pesos. Whereas in interval, we cannot say that a location having a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius is 4 times the heat of the location in which the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. But we can say that the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius more in a location of 40 degrees Celsius as compared to 10 degrees Celsius. Just remember that in interval, we may compare its responses through its difference, while in ratio, we can compare responses through its quotient. In statistics, it is important that you can classify the variables correctly because the statistical treatment depends on the classification of variables. Given these eight variables, can you identify which one is nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio? It is clear that numbers 3 and 6 are both nominal, since the taste of food cannot be arranged ascendingly or descendingly. Likewise, the zodiac signs may not be arranged ascendingly or descendingly. Or in other words, the zodiac signs are all on the same level. Further, numbers 2, 4, and 7 are all ordinal. The size of shirts have ranks, therefore we can arrange them from lowest to highest or vice versa. Likewise, these shades of blue may be arranged as well, ascendingly or descendingly.
and likewise the type of condominium here can be arranged as well descendingly or ascendingly. And consider that these five items are all qualitative variables since qualitative variables are either nominal or ordinal. And that leaves us with numbers 1, 5, and 8 are all in ratio. In number 1, the number of correct answers are in ratio. It is because a score of 0 means an examinee wasn't able to get any correct answer or absence of correct answer. Or there is no answer which is found to be correct. Remember that 0 implies nothingness in ratio. And likewise, we may divide responses like 8 and 4 which implies that 8 have twice as many correct answers as compared with 4. Similarly, length of a song is in ratio. It is because a sample response of 0 means the song does not exist. And we may compare the length of a song, let's say 3 and 9, which means that the song with length of 9 minutes is 3 times longer as compared to the song having a length of 3 minutes. And finally, for the discount rate, a zero discount rate means that there is no discount. And a discount rate of 10% is four times the discount rate of 2.5%. Consider that nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio are called as the levels of measurement. It is because nominal gives the least amount of information followed by ordinal, and on the other hand, ratio gives the most amount of information. So if you gather data and try to ask, are you a smoker? It is nominal and gives the least amount of information. Instead, we may ask, how often do you smoke? Now, this is ordinal and gives more information as compared to the previous one. And further, we may ask, how many sticks do you smoke a day? Now, this is in ratio and gives most information as compared to the previous questions. If you learned in this video, you may click like, you may also subscribe, and hit the bell button for more updates. See ya!